boys and girls, my name is Miss Jennifer and I'm a teaching artist in the PACE program. The PACE program is an arts integration program of the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. And today we will be creating a Louisiana crawfish collage. Now you might ask, what is a collage? A collage is when you take different materials and you put them together to create a picture. We are also going to be talking about crawfish and Louisiana. Did you know that Louisiana was the first state to ever have crawfish? And did you also know that a crawfish can only live up to 30 years? That's pretty long for a crawfish. So we are going to be taking our crawfish and we are going to be putting our crawfish in a crawfish house today. So let's now start getting our supplies ready. You're going to be needing scissors, glue, you could either use a glue bottle or you could use a glue stick. Now if you don't have a glue bottle and you don't have a glue stick that is perfectly fine because what you could do today is you could do this little project along with this and instead of gluing your crawfish house together, you can put the pieces in a container. And then, maybe on a rainy day, when you have nothing to do, you can pull that container out and you can do this little project again and use the pieces that you already tore to make the crawfish house. We're also going to be using crayons. We're going to be needing red, we're going to need orange, and we're going to need yellow. We will also be using blue, green, and purple. Now, we're going to be using brown, but if you happen to have different colors brown, browns, maybe dark, light, medium color, then you can also use that. And the last crayon will be our black crayon. We are going to be using our black crayon to do all of our drawing on our picture today. You will be using a sheet of white paper. Now it doesn't matter if it's a large sheet or a smaller sheet, it will work just fine. You could also use newspaper or mail flyers to do this little project. If you do not have newspaper and mail flyers, then simply grab another sheet of white paper and that will be just fine. Boys and girls, this might be a good time for you to pause the video to gather your supplies. Now, boys and girls, now that you have your supplies, let's go ahead and let's move on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a book. Now, the title of the book is called Crayfish. Wait, Miss Jennifer, I thought we were talking about crawfish. Well, we are. Crawfish are also called crayfish in other parts of the world, but here in Louisiana, we call them crawfish. The author of the book is Lola M. Schaefer. What are crayfish? Crayfish are small animals without bones. They are invertebrates. Crayfish have jointed legs. The legs are for walking and holding food. Where do crayfish live? Some crayfish live in rivers or streams. Some live in lakes or ponds. Some crayfish live on land. They build mud homes in soft, wet dirt. What do crayfish look like? Crayfish look like large bugs. They have two eye stalks. If you look carefully, there is one here and there's one here. 
crayfish have antenna that feel, taste, and smell. If you look here, you can see their antenna. Crayfish can be brown, pink, white, or other colors. Do crayfish really have shells? People call the hard outsides of crayfish shells, but crayfish shells are really exoskeletons. As crayfish grow, their shells get too small. Crayfish leave their old shells and grow new ones. What do crayfish feel like? Crayfish feel crusty. Their shells are bumpy and hard. Their claws feel sharp. How big are crayfish? Young crayfish are as big as thumbtacks. Most crayfish could fit in your hand. How do crayfish move? Crayfish walk across land. Their legs move forward, backward, or sideways. Crayfish walk in lakes or rivers. They walk along the sides of the bottom. What do crayfish eat? Crayfish eat worms, fish, snails, and bugs. They also eat water plants. Crayfish eat dead plants and animals in the water. Their claws hold, tear, and cut food. Where do new crayfish come from? Crayfish lay small black eggs on their bodies and you can see the eggs right here inside of the tail. They stay in the water with their eggs. Little crayfish come out of the eggs. They are called instars and if you look carefully right here you can see all of the baby crayfish that are hatching from their eggs. The end. So boys and girls, now that we know more about crawfish, we are ready to begin making our picture. We are going to be using our crayons to do this today, and I'm going to be starting with my red. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to make a sun on my paper. It doesn't matter where you put your sun, as long as your sun is somewhere in the sky, which would be the top of your paper. I'm going to put mine here and I'm going to draw a circle. I'm also going to put straight lines all the way around my sun. Those lines are called sun rays. The next thing that I'm going to do using my yellow is I'm going to color in my sun, making sure that I color it nice and dark so I have a bright yellow sun. Now I'm going to use my orange and I just want to kind of scribble in some little lines. That will be the shadow on our sun. Here I'm going to also, between the two red lines, I'm going to put orange lines all the way around. And now I have my sun. We are now going to be using blue to color the rest of our picture. You're going to start from the top and color down to the bottom. And I'm going to go from side to side when I am coloring. Please do not color on top of the circle of your sun because we want to make that circle of your sun nice and bright without any blue over it. 
but you can color over your sun rays. So here we go, we're going to color our paper. I'm gonna move my colors over just a little bit out of my way. And I am going to color around my sun. Now, don't worry, if you have any white spots showing, that is okay because you can always go back and you can color them in again. And so here I'm going to color all the way to the bottom of my paper. I've now reached the bottom, so now I'm going to simply go back and I'm going to color in any of the white spots on my paper that I see. And I think I am just about finished coloring my sky part of my picture. And there I go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to still use our blue crayon and we want to make clouds. Now watch me. I'm going to make one here on the top of my paper. That's going to be a curved line, a curved line, and a curved line. I'm also going to make another one here, curve line, curve line, and curve line. I'm going to make the bottom with another curve, curve, and curve. You can also add some curve lines on the inside of your clouds. I'm also going to be taking a black crayon and I want to make a couple of black lines also. Now I'm going to use my blue again and I want to color in my clouds. Coloring right over the blue and black curved lines that you drew inside of your clouds. And there we go. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go down to the bottom of my paper and you are going to be using brown. Any color brown will work for this. And with the bottom of the paper, we're simply going to do a curve and we're going to turn that into a wavy line, just like we stretched out a long snake. And we're going to color underneath that line. I'm going to use my brown and I'm going to color in the space underneath the wavy line. You can also go back and you can add some darker spots if you would like with your brown, maybe where the curves are at. And there we go. Now I'm going to pick up my orange crayon and now we're gonna do something super fun and we are going to just scribble, scribble our orange, making sure to stay underneath the line. We could do the same thing with the yellow. Scribble, 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 just have fun scribbling. And the last thing that we're going to do to this part is we're going to take our black Crayon, and we're just going to kind of scribble some little heels, maybe making some little lines right underneath our wavy line. And now we have the ground for our crawfish house that we are going to be making in just a few minutes. So there you go. We have now finished coloring the background of our paper. Now that we took a look at crawfish houses and how they are built, we are going to go back to our newspaper piece. So let's grab our newspaper piece and let's get ready to color. For this paper, we are going to be using brown. Now, if you remember, Miss Jennifer said you could have a couple of different color browns and that would work just fine. So I'm going to start off with a lighter brown and I'm just going to kind of scribble, scribble, scribble the brown color on my paper. It does not have to be perfect. You can go vertically, you can go horizontally. And wait, you can even scribble around circles. 
making sure that you hold your paper tight while you are coloring. And you want to color all over your paper. When you feel that you have enough brown in that color, you can switch to a different color. You can scribble, you can color across, you can color up and down. It's really up to you. Making sure, again, to try to cover up as much of the newspaper as we can. There you go. And the next thing I think I want to do is I want to add some yellow. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to have a lot of fun coloring this paper with yellow. Good job. So we can also, if you want, you can add some red. But only do it for half your paper. Leave this part without the red. So we're going to focus on this side of our paper. We want to make this side a little darker than the other side of our paper. If you need to draw a line to show you where to stop, you can do that. The next color I'm going to add is I'm going to add some orange. And if you want, you can also take a little bit of black and you can color some black also. Remembering not to pass that line on your paper. Good job. Now I think that I am finished coloring my paper. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start for the next part. If you need time, you may pause the video now to continue coloring the background of your picture and your newspaper that you have colored. The next part is we're going to take our newspaper and we're going to hold our fingers on both sides of our paper. We're going to start to rip it and we're going to rip it all the way down close to the line that you made. And you will notice that you have a piece that is darker and a piece that is lighter. Now this is the fun part. You are going to be tearing all of this paper into a pile right in front of you. So here I go, I'm gonna start ripping. Now, the main thing you wanna remember is not to make your papers too small. So I would say, if you made your paper this small, that is really too small. You're gonna be gluing for a very long time. But if you made it this size, that is perfect. Very good. So here, I'm going to continue tearing my paper and making them into a pile. And now I'm starting to stuff my piece. This is my darker piece. And remember, now we don't want them too, too big. We want them about this size. I'm gonna tear this in a little bit smaller. Don't worry, if you have pictures on your paper, just tear around the picture. And we're not going to use the picture, so we'll just set it aside and we'll continue tearing the rest of our paper. If a little bit of the picture is showing, that is okay. Now, I have my paper torn. I will put it in a pile 
and I will wait for you to continue tearing your paper. You may want to pause this video in order to finish tearing your paper. So, we're going to take a little break and now we're going to talk about crawfish houses. These are crawfish houses that Miss Jennifer found and I just couldn't wait to share these with you. A crawfish uses mud, as we learned in the book that I read to you, to make their houses. And some houses are very tall and some are even taller than this. Some are nice and wide and sort of um, shorter and some are smaller. But one thing is important for all crawfish houses. They need to have a hole where the crawfish can climb in and out of his home. A lot of times you will find crawfish houses that look like this. There will be a piece of grass growing outside of the house. There will be different kinds of little flowers also on the crawfish house. Let's move this over and now I want to show you what a crawfish does. So here I just used some clay that I had hanging around and a crawfish uses its mouth and its pinchers and feet to shape this mud. So let's pretend that this is mud and we work in really hard just like the crawfish. And there you go. And now if you notice the crawfish starts with a larger bottom and it gets smaller as you go. But they're all made of these little circle pieces of mud that the crawfish makes with its claws, feet, and mouth. And here, he will crawl up to the top and he will set the little circle down. Again, making sure that you have a hole for your crawfish to come in and out of his house. Now crawfish houses and crawfish are found in nature. The crawfish houses that I just showed you looked like this before I gathered them for this video. You will see here is the tall one right here. There's flowers, there's leaves, there's different kinds of plants, and we would call this outside in nature. Now, boys and girls, we now know how a crawfish makes his house. We are going to now make our crawfish and then right after we're going to use our pieces that we tore up into pieces and we're going to make our crawfish house. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to use a black crayon and I want to start first by looking at this crawfish. If you notice, we have a head, a tail, and pinchers. We also have eyes and antennas. So we're going to start with the body part of our crawfish. So you want to put a dot in the middle of your paper. Then you're going to be drawing a curved line going this way and a curved line going this way connecting the bottom together. Then we're going to use our wavy line and we're going to make our tail connecting it together again. At the very bottom, we're going to make his little flipper right here. Then we're going to add his eyes, his antennas, and then his pinchers. We're going to use a rectangle for his pincher on this side and a rectangle on this side. Now, for the next rectangle, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. To make his pinchers, we are going to be using two alphabet that we know. So here you can see he has his pinchers. We're going to be using a letter C. -C. So here we go, letter C on one side, letter C on the other. 
Now we're going to use this letter. What do you think this letter is, boys and girls? You are right, it is the letter V. And now we're going to make a V on the inside of his pincers. Now, if you remember in the story, the shell of the crayfish had bumps. It had really, really rough shell. So here, you can put little dots for the little bumps. If you remember, it said the shell was a little crusty. You can also put different kinds of lines if you would like. And there, we have our crawfish. I'm now going to take my red crayon and I'm going to color in my crawfish, making sure to not go outside of the lines. Now my crawfish is finished. I want to now start gluing my crawfish house onto my paper. Remember, you can use glue bottles, glue sticks, or you could even simply just lay these pieces down without gluing them. And later, you can go back, maybe on a rainy day, and if you have glue, you can glue them back on. So now I'm going to put my glue, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that when I put my glue on my paper, I'm only covering up part of the tail of my crawfish. So we need to remember that crawfish start with it large and they get smaller as they make their house. So now we're just going to put a little bit of glue and there we go. Remember, let's go wider on the bottom, getting smaller to the top. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to just place your paper on top of the glue. It doesn't have to be put in any certain way, just as long as you're covering up the glue, making it wide at the bottom and shorter going up to the top. And I am almost there. So I'm just gonna add a few more pieces. Oop, I put that one backward. So I'm gonna take it off and I'm going to add another piece here. So maybe one more piece and I am going to put it right here. So now my crawfish has a house. If you laid your pieces on because you didn't have glue, then you might want to put your extra pieces here in a container or maybe even a bag so that you can have them for another day. So boys and girls, I hope that you had as much fun as I did today creating our little Louisiana crawfish collage. We will be posting new videos every day starting at 10 a.m. Standard Central Time for kindergarten, first, and second grade. Each lesson will be tied to the academic curriculum. Some lessons will be in visual arts and others will be in with creative movement. I am a visual artist in which I use different materials to create art, but we also have creative movement artists in our program who use their bodies to make art. I hope that you enjoyed our program enough to return tomorrow. If you are interested in supporting programs like this, you may make a donation to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization that manages the PACE program. You may use the link in the description. Help us keep our teaching artist working. Share this video to keep making art. Want more? You can book private lessons. As a teaching artist, I can lead one-on-one -on -one or group lessons. To inquire about private lessons, you may email me at jenjazdaz at yahoo.com.